uh, please share this. Okay, share it on your Facebook. Um, you could even share it out by text message. You could even share it by email uh, because I think it might be an encouragement not only to you but to maybe friends or family um, that are kind of gearing up uh, for a new year. Um, and, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and, you know, there, there's different levels of gearing up. There are those of you that are really excited about New Year's and getting into it. And there are those of you that are not as excited. You're more kind of asking some big questions. You might even feel a little bit of confusion. You might even feel a little bit of frustration. No matter where you're at, I believe that God has something that he wants to speak to us today. So take a second or two to share this. That would be absolutely incredible. We're going to be in Matthew today. Matthew chapter 11, uh, verses 28 and 30. And you're like... That's not, a, that's not a Christmas text. I thought this was going to be Christmas service. Well, <laughs> thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, that was kind of the, uh, the debate. Like, is, is this a Christmas service or is it not a Christmas service, right? Like, it's the day after Christmas, which I, I would think is still technically Christmas weekend, okay? But I quickly learned that no, no, no. As soon as it's after Christmas, okay, I, I'm guessing, Glenn can correct me if I'm wrong, as soon as it's midnight on Christmas night and it's no longer Christmas, that, that we can't do a Christmas Sunday once Christmas is over. Is that right, Glenn? Okay, so even Glenn, even Glenn agree, agrees with, with that. Um, and so, no, this is not a, a Christmas message per se. Um, the Christmas message that we had was our, our entire Advent series culminating with Pastor Masood at, at the, uh, the wonderful, the anointed uh, candlelight service on Christmas Eve. So, here we go. Our post-Christmas, okay, uh, 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 message, Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. This is Jesus speaking. He says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am gentle and humble. Come to me and you will find relief, rest for your souls. Verse 30. For my yoke is, this is out of the Amplified Classic, wholesome, useful, good, not harsh, hard, sharp, pressing, but comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. My burden is light and easy to be borne. So when it comes to wherever you're at today, um, I want to remind you of your potential. I want to remind you, as we've been studying in our origin series, that you've been created in the image and likeness of God. As he spoke to the prophet Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you, Jeremiah. I know the plans I have for you, John, Jim, Jenkins, whoever's watching this morning. I know the plans I have for you. This is what the Lord is saying this morning. I know the plans that I have. You have some good plans, but I have some great plans. Your friends might think you may have some crazy plans, but I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans not to harm you, but plans to bless you. Plans to give you a future. And a hope. So I want to remind you this morning that many of you have unfulfilled prophetic words. Many of you have unfulfilled dreams. Many of you have unfulfilled desires. And some of you are ready. You're like, okay, I'm ready. This has been a crazy two years, okay? But I'm ready to, to bring it. I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling my groove. I'm, 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 I'm feeling a sense of momentum. And I feel like I'm on a wave, all right? Here we go. Let's go. Look out. Here I come. And yet others of you, you don't feel like you're on a wave. You feel like you're beached. You feel like the wave just vomited you, you up on, on, the, on, the, on the shore. You... 
Do you feel like the coach has called you out of the game and sat you down on the bench? You feel like you had all these incredible prophetic words and maybe you feel like they've been recently flushed down the toilet. Some of you, it's like there used to be so much hope within your heart and now you're just sensing this place of hope deferred. And as we get ready to run into this next year, let me just tell you this right now. You and I, we serve a big God. Here's the problem. You and I, we have a big, big father. You know that song? Um, uh, You're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's true. He is good, good. He's also big, big. Our God is the big, big, good, good father. And the problem with that is that he has big plans. Big, glorious, awesome plans. And you say, well, that's, why is that a problem? Why do you keep saying that's a problem? The reason why that's a problem is because if we don't realize the plan associated with his plan, if we don't get Father's strategy for what he's holding in his Heart, and we try to do something with our own efforts, with our own understanding. We get his blueprint according to the spirit, but we try to execute it according to our flesh. By our own might, by our own power, here's what happens. Something that in the spirit is a big, big blessing can become a big, big burden. In fact... Oftentimes, the Lord will speak to us. He'll give us a glimpse of the outcome. He'll give us a glimpse of of the future. But he doesn't necessarily always give us the how. So he gives us the what, but he doesn't necessarily give us the how, which brings us into this big gap. Okay, I'm right here, and you've called me there. I'm here, you've called me there, but how do I get from here to there And again, the bigger the there, the bigger the gap. And the problem with this, the level of caution is that as we serve a big God, as we have a big father, as he has big dreams, as we have big dreams and passion and desire within our own heart, it's going to be very, very important that we see this invitation from Jesus that we're going to have to make sure that we're yoked to Christ. Because it is possible to believe in Jesus, but to get unyoked from Jesus. It is possible to worship Jesus and not necessarily trust Jesus. Okay? Many of you know my, my own story that I've never denied God. I've never denied the faith, okay? Uh, uh, I've, never, I've never cursed God, although I have cursed people and the church. <laughs> Good times, right? But I could never necessarily deny God. So I've always believed in God. But for a great period of my life, I didn't trust in God. And that provides for a big problem because when we don't necessarily trust in God, here's what happens. We begin stepping into that place of becoming our own functional Savior. When we look at where God is calling us, but we see this big, big, big gap. And to the degree that we cannot trust God with the gap, and to the degree that we try to fill that gap with ourselves, to that degree we're committing really the first sin, breaking the first of the ten Commandments, commandments of thou shalt not commit idolatry. I worship you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. But I can't trust you, Jesus, because you haven't given me the strategy. You haven't given me the how. And so, therefore, I will insert my plan. I will insert my thing. And, and this is where it becomes really, really tricky because we feel the need to move. We feel the need to act. We feel the need to have to say something. We feel the need to have to fight for something. We feel the need to have to convince people. Why? Because we've seen it. We've, we've seen what is in God's heart. We, we know the greatness. We know the power. We know the potential. And, and yet there's, there's that place within our own heart where there's, there's that place of just not knowing. And I don't know about you, but sometimes 
when I don't know to that, uh, to that degree, to the degree that I don't know, it's like I have to overcompensate with trying to hype myself up into maybe pretending or acting like I know. And so this text is a big, big deal. Today, if you're watching and you know, you know, you know exactly where you're going. You know exactly how you're going to do it. It's like, you better, you better get on board or I'm going to run you over. Look out. Ah, I'm a lion. I'm a, I'm a bear. I'm an ox. Ah, here I come, right? If that's you or if you are like, oh, I'm, a, I'm scared. I'm timid. I don't, I don't know where I'm going. No, no matter what side of the fence you fall on this morning, this is what Jesus is saying to all of us this morning Hey, before you go into a new year, hey, before you even go into a new day, just hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Come to me. Reyoke to me. Because I think it's possible that over time, if we're not careful, we can get unyoked from Christ. Meaning that we're pulling all of the weight. Listen, if you're, if you're watching this morning and there's big things in you, but those big things have become a big burden and now it feels like you're pulling all of the weight and you're wondering how much longer can I pull all this weight? This is what Jesus is saying this morning. You don't have to do that. You can come. You can come to me, all you who labor, all you who are heavy laden. What does that mean? All you who are overburdened, come to me and I'll pull your weight. He says, come to me and take my yoke. Interesting, right? For any of you that were ever raised in the church, you were... Uh, told as a child to not be unequally yoked, right? We always raise our children. The Bible says to not be married to an unbeliever, right? The Bible says don't be unequally yoked. And, and so we know this term of being yoked, but the picture is of a, two big pieces of wood that go on uh, the, the necks of oxen that connect these ox uh, together and, uh, and they're connected, and what the wood does is the wood holds both ox accountable that they would be equally pulling uh, the weight. And when we read in the scripture, um, hey, you know, do not be unequally yoked, right? Um, as you're looking for your future spouse, um, you know, find someone that doesn't just believe in Jesus. Find someone that doesn't just worship Jesus, but find someone that you can be connected to, connected to at the neck, where, where you can both be pulling your weight, that you can be pulling your weight spiritually, that you can be pulling your weight in all these, and many, many, emotionally, in many, many um, different areas. And this is what Jesus, this is what Jesus says here. He says, come to me, you who are overwhelmed. Come to me, you who are stressed out. Come to me, you whose souls are overwhelmed with anxiety. Come to me, all you who think you've got this whole thing figured out. Come to me, all you who think, I don't need Jesus. Come to me. And second, take my yoke. Come along, Jesus what Jesus said. Come alongside of me, and you're going to discover that my yoke, this big, heavy thing, this big wooden thing that clamps around your neck, you're going to find that it's easy and that it's light. Jesus says, come to me and you will find that my grace will be sufficient. Listen, if you, everyone watching this morning, his grace will be sufficient in your life in 2022. His grace is going to be sufficient in your family, in your marriage, in your children this year in 2022. His grace is going to be sufficient within your career. His grace is going to be sufficient within your kingdom endeavors. His grace will be sufficient, but you're going to have to lean not on your own understanding. You're going to have to acknowledge him in all of your ways and let him be the source of your strength. The source, the, the, the true vine 
And in 2022, we're going to have to learn, we're going to have to be content with just being branches. Then the interesting thing here is that Jesus says, let me remind you who I am. If you're going to be yoked to me, let me remind you who I am. This is what he says, for I am gentle, meek. He says, I'm also humble. I'm lowly in heart. Why is it, why is it interesting there? When Jesus makes this call to those who are stressed out, when Jesus makes this call to those who are underneath all of this heavy, heavy burdens, when Jesus makes this call, I don't know about you, but when I feel stressed out, I, I live in a place of, 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 of like being semi-triggered, right? right? Like when I'm like, ah, this is crazy. Ah, what am I going to do? Ah, when, when I find myself in this kind of place, I find myself kind of in a place where I'm a bit brash, where I'm a bit impatient or short-fused. Oftentimes when I'm really, really frustrated, that's when it really doesn't take a whole lot for me to, to lash out, and to say something that I don't mean. Also, oftentimes when we get stressed out, when we get overwhelmed, it can manifest as pride or cockiness. Sometimes when we get stressed out, we can kind of um, mask it a bit with a facade of arrogance. And what's interesting is Jesus says here, all you who are stressed, all you who are frustrated, all you who are short-fused, all of you who just, ah, come to me. Why? Because this is who I am. Jesus says, I'm not impatient. I'm not going to lash out. I'm not triggered. I'm not proud. I'm not arrogant. I'm not pushy. Jesus says, you can come to me. You can trust me. Why? Is I'm a safe place. He says, you can come to me. Why? Because I'm gentle. You can come to me because I'm humble. And if you choose to come to me, you will find rest. Let me ask you a question real quick. What endeavors, what things, what objectives, what obstacles, what goals, what New Year's resolutions are you forming and framing that are not yoked to Christ? Whatever you're able to identify, most likely you're going to find overcompensating traits that are not in alignment with Jesus. Things that you're having to put on performances that you're having to play in order to keep yourself believing that what you're going to attempt to do is actually possible. It's not that your goals are bad. It's not that our desires are wrong. It's not that we've missed it. It's not that we're seeing the wrong future. It's just that we've seen just enough and maybe in our place of immaturity and maybe in our place of, of just refusing to fail. Maybe in those areas where we haven't been able to trust Christ, we've unyoked those things from Christ. And this is what Jesus says. Come to me, all of you. Come to me with all of your dreams. Come to me with all of your noble prophetic words. Come to me with all of your kingdom endeavors. Come to me with all of your addictions. Come to me with all of your shame. Come to me with all of your insecurity. Come to me with all of your big, big, big questions. Those areas where you don't know what to do. Those areas where you should, you're not sure if you should say yes or if you should say no. Those areas where maybe you're lacking hope. Come, Jesus says, come, 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 come. Where? Jesus says, come to me. Come to me. And let's re-yoke. Come to me and bring everything that you are, everything that you think you represent. Bring your greatest hopes, your greatest strengths, your greatest weaknesses, and your greatest failures. Come to me. Everything that you are, yoke to me, and you will find grace you will find divine enablement to do everything that I have called you to do.
Listen, if Jesus has called you to do something, it's his problem and not yours. You're going to have to be obedient. You're going to have to be courageous. But if Jesus has called you to do it, then the water's ability to sustain you so that you can walk upon it, that is the responsibility of the Father and not yours. We are ultimately not the miracle workers. We are simply the sons and daughters of God who are learning to walk in and release the Father's love, who are really truly learning to walk a trust walk and a faith walk. And if you're like me, (laughs) I feel like I'm learning how to walk a rest walk. Because some of the things before us are so, so, so great, and they're going to require a lot of work, but not at the expense of our souls falling into turmoil and anxiety. So let's just do a quick pulse check of our mind, our will, and our emotions. Let's just do a quick check to find any areas that are not tethered to Christ, any parts of our soul that are not yoked to Christ, any parts of our heart where there is not rest. Let's just pray, invite Holy Spirit to come, because I know Jesus wants to do some big, big things through this community. I know that Jesus wants to do some big, big things, even through our friends of SRC. I know that Jesus wants to do some big, big things through our children, but not at the expense of big, big blessings becoming big, big burdens. We're going to need to learn the art of yoking to Christ and remaining in him and not allowing for the greatness of the kingdom to pull us out of trust. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, come. (laughs) Hover in the midst of our tohu vavohu. Come and hover in the midst of our kosek. Come and brood within our dreams and desires. Come and hover in the midst of our big, big questions. And we declare this morning that we will come to Jesus. And that we will be yoked to Christ, knowing that his burden is easy and his yoke is light. We thank you, Jesus, that your spirit is gentle. It's humble that you are gracious. And any areas of our heart that are amped up on religious aggression, we repent of all religious aggression. And we ask King Jesus that you would judge the spirit of religious aggression religious drivenness that would wear us out so we can't be powerful and effective. For those who are going through a time of grieving, Father, I pray that your grace would come and lift them up, lift them up, bring them up, Father, into your perspective. And we we mourn with those who mourn. But, Father, I pray for a For your oil of joy to come and to sabotage the spirit of heaviness that would like to turn something that should be natural into a place of perpetual spiritual slavery. And we say, grief, you are not our friend. We declare hope, you are our friend. So right now we yoke our dreams to Christ. Right now we yoke our disappointments to Christ. We yoke our failures to Christ. We yoke our hearts to Christ. Everything that we are, we yoke it to you, King Jesus. And we ask for a sobriety of thought, a clarity of conscience. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for a quickening in our bodies for an activating of our cells, and we call for our whole being, our soul, our spirit, and our body to be recalibrated by your grace so that by your grace we can stand, stand firm, stand tall, not in ourselves, 
but cooperating from that place of revelation that it is in you we live, in you we move, in you we believe, in you we think, in you we dream, in you, with you, we imagine the future. We declare your great grace upon Seattle Revival Center. Every mother and father, every grandmother and grandfather, every son and every daughter, your revelation and your illumination of all things that are hidden, that are keeping us from accomplishing everything that you have called for us to accomplish. We thank you that Jesus, you are the one that fills the gaps. And we invite for you to come to be our gap filler so that we can cross over. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for a crossing over. Even now, Lord, I pray for a crossing over, for a crossing over of the Red Sea, for a crossing over and through the storm. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus, you are the light at the end of the tunnel. And we thank you that your presence is here, that you are near. You are a good, good father. You are a big, big father. And you have big, big grace available for each and every one of us today. And I declare your great, great grace and faithfulness. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen and amen and amen. Listen, come to Jesus today. Yoke yourself to Christ. And get ready because the best is yet to come. God bless you guys. Love you guys so, so, so much. Merry Christmas, and I will see you in 2022. Happy New Year's.